David Rosen is the group <coughs> VP. He's chief of B2B social media at Makovsky and Company here in New York. He's got deep experience despite his age and despite his youthful appearance in B2B technology, institutional finance, corporate PR. Uh, he's helping clients drive sales, set industry agendas, and support full and, and fair stock valuation. Some of the clients that David has worked with over the years have included Dell, Capgemini, City Smith, uh, and several others. His blog on B2B social media, b2bformula.com, is one that you probably want to take a look at and follow. Uh, he's syndicated as well through the Bulldog Reporter. And he tweets, of course, uh, at the at David H. Rosen. David, it's yours. Have fun. Thank you. Good evening, and uh, Henry, thank you for the kind introduction. I'd also like to express our gratitude to PRSA in New York uh, and our hosts, Davis and Gilbert, for the support of this event, uh, and thank PR Newswire for the sponsorship of tonight. And we're also really proud to be a part of Internet Week New York. I invite you to check out uh, their website for all the different great events that are happening this week and to go to them and support them and show that New York is a uh, tech and social media powerhouse. Uh, one thing I'll say is please uh, don't put away your iPhones and Blackberries <laughs> and other mobile devices. Um, we won't think you're rude if you're, if you're looking at them because we know that you'll be tweeting up there on the board. And uh, we encourage you to tweet, blog, Flickr, Twitter, YouTube, and whatever other app that you have uh, turned into a verb, go ahead and do it and enjoy and uh, be a part of the conversation online. Uh, and a quick reminder that the, we have a great uh, audio system in this room. And actually, there's microphones all down the table. So that means we'll be able to hear any question that you ask. It also means we'll hear any comment that you make. Uh, the whole room will hear it uh, if you make a comment during the panel. So please. Uh, throw your comments up on uh, into the Twitter stream, and uh, one other thing is is that the uh, keep, try to keep your cell phones away from the microphones because that's what uh, sometimes can cause some feedback. So appreciate that. Now we've got an amazing group of panelists here for you tonight: leaders in social media uh, from the worlds of real estate, law, consulting, technology, uh, and even traditional media, which I'm really thrilled about. And you know. One thing that you know, we're thinking about how this, this night could evolve is we didn't just want a night of case studies. There's been a lot of that kind of stuff over the years. And if you just go to Google and type in B2B social media case study, you'll find all the proof that you need that social media pays off for B2B. So tonight what we're really going to be focusing on is how to get B2B companies to embrace social media which uh, I think is probably the hardest part of having the whole thing be a success. So it's, it's convincing them to adopt it and to use it to its full potential. And I, I talk often with people about why B2B has been slower to adopt social media than consumer brands. <coughs> and, it, and in some quarters, frankly, it's forbidden. And it's, you know, the title of tonight, The Forbidden Dance. And they tend to give three reasons. The first is, sort of cultural inertia, I think we're all sort of familiar with that, regulatory constraints, and finally a lack of resources, which I think for a lot of the people in the room who are doing social media, uh, it's been basically a second job for them on top of their original job. And also to be fair, it's not like consumer companies went out and just automatically embraced the social sphere. Many of them were dragged, kicking and screaming, onto the web because of some sort of crisis. And because B2Bs have inherently smaller audiences than a lot of B2Cs, uh, they haven't been, been forced out there as much. And that's also why it's a little bit behind the curve. Now, those are all really good reasons. They're very legitimate reasons. They make a lot of sense. There are things that have to be answered in order for a B2B company to really go out there and do social media in the right way. But I also think that there's a difference between consumer companies and B2B companies that trumps every single one of those concerns that I just listed. And with all due respect to our consumer PR cousins and brothers and sisters in the industry, I think that the difference is that social media is going to deliver 10 times the amount of payback for B2B than it ever could for B2C. Just consider. In B2B, the audiences are smaller and they're harder to find. 
But what medium makes it easier and cheaper to find those people than social media? The fields that B2B occupy are complex. There's a lot of detail, there's a lot of explanation, there's a lot of nuance. Is there any medium but social that lets you, it gives you the space to fully explain your case, your product, your service, your expertise? And finally, whether it's a product or a service, what B2B companies, at the end of the day, are selling is an expert opinion. And that's demonstrated through thought leadership. And there is no better medium than social media to disseminate great ideas, faster, further, more targeted. Bar none, social media trumps those. And it's definitely better than advertising. <laughs> it's definitely better than direct mail. And my, my personal opinion is that in many, many cases, it is far better than traditional media relations. It's just a different beast. Now, all those channels that I just mentioned are critical ingredients to integrated marketing campaigns. They are absolutely needed. But their relative importance to our customers, to our audiences, the people we're trying to influence, the relative importance has shrunk. Social media has crowded in, and all those other channels have been crowded out. Just consider, according to Forrester, just looking at 45 to 54 year olds, right, is one of the biggest misconceptions that this is something for 20 year olds. Among 45 to the 54 year old demographic in the US, 71% regularly read blogs, 38% have joined a social network, 37% regularly offer their comments back onto the web. So they have an expectation of, of there being a channel there to give feedback on. And 19% have gone so far as to create their own social media channel, a Twitter stream, a blog, a Flickr stream, a YouTube channel. These are people who are giving out their own expert opinions to people who respect them. They are the members of the media that we used to serve exclusively in some other realm. So if your heart rate is up, if your palms are a little sweaty, if you have that feeling in your stomach that you get when you're about to take a really big step into something new, then you're in the right place because the forbidden dance is about to begin. <laughs>